The letters of Jesus' brothers were so dangerous that for hundreds of years the church fathers refused to include them in the Bible. They were only finally accepted because the oral traditions concerning Jesus' family were so strong. There were some Christian leaders who said, well, James, I don't know if we should include him. Now, he's the brother of Jesus. Why wouldn't you want his letter? Because if you read the letter, it doesn't have the gospel that people came to associate with Christianity. In complete contrast to today's Christianity, the letters of Jesus' brothers describe him as their master but not divine. They see Jesus as a human character blessed by God. The thing about the book of James, it's the teachings of Jesus but not the teachings about Jesus. James passes on what he got from his brother. You could say it has no theology. The seventh stage. And yet it does have a theology, but it's the theology of Jesus. But it's no theology about Jesus in that book. Doesn't mention the cross of Christ. Doesn't mention the blood of Jesus. Doesn't mention forgiving sins through believing in the Lord, our Savior, who's in heaven. Nothing like that. It's an amazing book to read. This alternative version of Jesus' message can be found in other texts too. In the Greek quarter of the old city of Jerusalem, there is another ancient book that was not included in the Bible. It's one of the most contested of early Christian documents, possibly even older than the Gospels themselves. I believe it is the key to understanding Jesus' original message. I'm very sorry that the library is not in its proper situation. The Library of the Greek Patriarch has the only complete copy of an ancient handbook specially written for converts to Christianity that was compiled when Jesus' family was still alive. The Didache gives a direct insight into what the very earliest Christians thought and did. It has never before been filmed. Can I hold it? Yes. Wow. This is like being close to the early church. Of course. Wow. And, and um, you, I'm not using gloves, is that okay? It's okay. It's I'm okay. not using as well. Yes. Wow. The book begins here. Although the oisi, mia ti zois ke mia tu thanatu, there are two ways, one of the life and one of the death. The Didache, or teaching, contains a code of Christian ethics based on the original teachings of Jesus and some instructions as to the proper forms of worship. There is a great difference between the two ways. But what makes it so dangerous for today's Christianity is what it leaves out. There is no mention of the virgin birth, no mention of the resurrection, and above all, no mention of Jesus as God. They talk of Jesus in here as Lord and not Lord God, suggesting that they saw him as being more human than divine. How does that strike you? In my opinion, in the evangelists, in the Gospels, and in the works of apostles, uh, there is a balance uh, between the presentation of uh, Christ as the Son of God and as the Son of Man. The Lord to whom we believe is uh, divine, but he is human. And that's the problem. For 2,000 years, the church has grappled with the balance between Jesus' divine and human natures. But it is the divine that has dominated. In the process, it is Jesus' essential humanity and the humanity of his teachings that has been lost. Yes. The Didache also contains a detailed description of a very early communion service. Unlike today, there is no suggestion that the bread and wine are the body and blood of Christ. In fact, Jesus is referred to not as God's son, but his servant. And concerning the broken bread, we thank you, our Father, for the life and knowledge which you made known to us through Jesus, your servant. To you belongs the glory forever. Do you think that one of the reasons why they don't mention Jesus as Lord God and they don't mention 
the resurrection was because they didn't believe that those events had taken place, that Jesus wasn't the Son of God and that Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, but instead he was a human, a prophet and not divine. It's a dangerous question. In my opinion, uh, the fact of re resurrection of Christ uh, couldn't and shouldn't be ignored. Uh, Paul speaks and says, if Christ uh, was not resurrected, then we shall be accused that we, uh, we speak falsely against God. What is absolutely fundamental to all Christians, including myself, is the idea that Jesus is God. Without that, there is no Christianity. But what is now clear is that the very earliest Jewish Christians, including Jesus' own family, did not see him as God. And ultimately, that is why the church has gone so far to delete them from the Christian story. This is Judas, uh, the brother of the Lord according to the flesh. Jude. Jude, yeah, who has written in, a in the Bible, and in the letter of Jesus' younger brother Jude, there is an extraordinary passage denouncing a group of people who are secretly corrupting the true faith. For admission has been secretly gained by some who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly persons who pervert the grace of our God. If you decode it, it becomes a clear warning that the new movement was losing sight of Jesus' original message. By the time Jude writes, he could see the writing on the wall. He could see we're losing out. And it's a battle cry. It's a call to arms, spiritually speaking. He's not talking about outsiders. He's talking about people who claim to be part of us that are not teaching what we were originally handed down. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loudmouth boasters, flattering people to gain advantage. And he's getting very worried, and he's telling the little group that would still listen to him. I think, in effect, he's saying, don't listen to all these new things that are coming along. You fight hard for that original faith that was delivered to us. As we walk along, young men, we will get along just fine. That man upsets me so Far much more than you could know I hear of his name and reputation everywhere I go Though his family and his clan once knew him as an honest man He's dividing everyone with his claim that God is one So as we walk along young men, as we walk along together We will get along just fine He's misled all the weak ones and the poor ones and the slaves They think they've all found wealth and freedom following his ways He's corrupted all the youth with his twisted brand of truth Convince them that they all are strong, giving them somewhere to belong So don't talk The American author of the wide-selling book, The One Hundred a ranking of the most influential persons in history chose Prophet Muhammad to be at the top of the list. He said, My choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels. It is this unparalleled combination of secular and religious influence which I feel entitles Muhammad to be considered the most influential single figure in human history. Confusion, conflict, lack of values, lack of genuine faith, living life unaware. Religions manipulated, misunderstood, religious scriptures altered and modified for petty gain. In all this belly, I will strive to expose the truth because it's your right to know and my duty to tell the truth. Let falsehood perish.